Like, why did you decide, fuck it, we're going into Fortnite? The team owners are usually sitting in the meeting going, so, you know, epic. How are you going to make me money? How much are you going to pay me to bring in players? The sentiment around the game is you can't make money as an esports org. There's no support. We look at it the other way around. We're looking at, does this have the mechanics that we need to make money off of it? Because we know how to make money. That's, our, that's what we're good at. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Brandwurst Podcast. I'm your host, Arab, along with my co-host, Edwin. And today we have on Jakob Christensen, who is the founder and chief revenue officer of the greatest CSGO team of all fucking time, Astralis. If you know anything about CSGO or don't, you've probably heard of them. Well, as of two days ago, Jakob decided they're going to dip their toes into competitive Fortnite with their first signing of Thomas HD, a decision I don't quite understand. Is there actually money to be made in Fortnite? Because the community sentiment says no. But maybe there's something we don't see. Jakob, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much. And I think that was the, the best characterization of Kestralis I've heard in quite a while. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, yeah so uh, <laughs> that was a good intro, bro. That is my man. I'll, 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 scare, sort of, I'll tape it and I'll use it. <laughs> and put it put it on one of those montages of Astralis being the greatest and add some epic music behind me and maybe I'll become famous. Um it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Thank you so much. You've great English for someone who doesn't yeah, live in the US. I, didn't, I did I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice that you weren't like I thought he was from here. I was like, what? I've I've actually had sort of on vacation and stuff. I've had like Americans walk up to me and start asking me from where in the U.S. I'm from. But I think <laughs> I think I play basketball my whole life, so I think my my biggest sort of influence has always been American players and coaches. So yeah. I think that's that's sort of where I have it from. Mm -hmm. Um, welcome to the podcast. You know, I'm not today. I don't I don't want to ask you about like CS:GO shit. You know, I'm sure like I don't know if you've ever been on any podcasts and like talked about CS:GO shit. But yeah, and we're not here to mainly ask about CS:GO. Honestly, we're here to ask about. Well, first of all. How the fuck did you decide to be in the two games that people think you can't even make money in as an as an esports org? <laughs> well, well, so funnily enough, you know, I'm I'm Danish and sort of Danish heritage has always been Counter Strike. We've for some weird reason always been really really good at a lot of games. Like if you look at League of Legends, if you look at Dota, there's like legendary Danish players, especially League of Legends, we've been really really good at. But for some reason, culturally, Counter-Strike has always been the biggest game. Like, it is most sort of mainstream people who are aware of eSport in Denmark believes that there is basically only Counter-Strike and nothing else. They might have heard of Fortnite because they know some kid who plays it, but Counter-Strike runs the business here. And I think, you know, Counter-Strike for me has always been my DNA and made a lot of sense. I think we've cultivated a, a market here where we can actually make money off of Counter-Strike. And it's actually a pretty good business. Um, I, I I think a lot of people are just burning cash like crazy, like they are in places in esports. Yeah. Well, I think I mean, well, you can see our books. We're a public company, so really, we're getting very we're getting very very close see. to. All right, uh, fine, man, yeah. I'll invest. <laughs> <laughs> and that was something no, no. So yeah, <laughs> the, well, I was gonna I was gonna bring that up. That was that was one of the first things I was gonna bring up about how you guys ended up being a public company. And I read I read on your website, but I don't know if I misunderstood it. Were you guys the first like? team like to go public on the nasdaq like the first like esports team i th i think we're one of the first i think there are some who are debatable i think there's there's a couple of i think there's a smaller swedish one who went in as a media company but then bought a counter-strike team but isn't really a, a team right, business right. i think we're the first ones of the major teams to go public yes Wow, that's insane. Now, what what dr drove that decision? Was it just needing more investors to support all the different kinds of teams? Because I think you, dude, I looked at the Twitters and you guys have like five different Twitters for for a bunch of different things. You know what I mean? Is that why? Like, what 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 drove the decision to go public? So, historically, Astralis was was built as part of a company called Refresh Entertainment that also owned and operated Blast, which I also founded. Uh, the Refresh wow. Entertainment company. Um, we have been venture funded always, pretty much as every big esports team. And the problem with venture funding is that you put a lot of decision making in a very few people. Uh, there's, there's, you know, there's three people on your board who owns tw 10 to 20 percent of the company, and basically the mood of the day sets the agenda of the board. Sometimes, I think what what yeah. we've created with Astralis, especially here in Denmark in the Nordics, is we're almost sort of a a people's team, like we're the national team of Denmark. When when we won the first major in Counter Strike, I mean, we had the the prime minister people of Denmark. Love you. 
People love you. Yeah, congratulating us. We went to the 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 what is it called the uh, the mayor's office to have pancakes, which is usually only one thing you do if you win a world championship or an Olympic medal. So we were brought in there. So we we really wanted to sort of give people a a chance to be a part of our journey. Mm-hmm. So I think that for us was a very very easy decision. I think. Obviously, the other thing is I'm I'm relatively young compared to what I'm doing, and and I've never done a public company before, so I figured, well, we'll do that. That'll be great. How old are you? I, I had no idea 31? how many rules and regulations there are. Oh I mean, my God, yeah. I I wouldn't even be surprised if if someone is watching this and I'm gonna get a text at some point saying you shouldn't say that or you shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How yeah, old well, are you? We'll, we'll 31. Uh, no, no, I'm uh, I just turned 34, so I'm uh, I'm getting older. Yeah, and now you, that we moved into Fortnite, this is the first time I'm feeling really old. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> I'll, I'll be um, honest. What made you go into Fortnite? Like, uh, because this the sentiment around the game is you can't make money as an esports org. There's no support. There's no. Is there? Well, if you wouldn't be able to answer it because you know it, it's it'll probably be NDA. But I'm gonna ask it anyway. Is there something you know that nobody else knows? Like, why did you decide? Fuck it. We're going into Fortnite. Hey, I think honestly that we look at things typically about 180 degrees different than anybody else. A lot of people, and, and I'm hearing this a lot when I'm when I'm speaking to different leagues and looking at different new games, is everybody. I mean, when I when I'm saying that, I mean the team owners are usually sitting in the meeting going, "So you know, Epic, how are you going to make me money? How much are you going to pay me to bring in players?" We look at it the other way around. We're looking at does this have the mechanics that we need to make money off it? Because we know how to make money. That's our, That's what we're good at. You can look at the list of partners that we have. It's significantly longer than any other, pretty much any other esports team in the world. Um, but but we, we saw the grounds for doing it here. And I think we, we've been looking at Fortnite for a while. We've sort of been waiting and seeing, is this a fad? Is this going to go up? Is it going to go down? I, I still think there's a lot... That could be a lot better from an epic standpoint. Way better. Um, but I still believe that they, with the monetary sort of um, support that they're giving in regards to prize money, etc. But I also think just the cultural push that they're giving the game gives me the platform that I need to talk to people. But look, if you look at even in Denmark, that is the Counter Strike Kingdom. If you look at people under 16, there's barely anybody playing Counter Strike. All of them are playing Fortnite. So for me, as much as this is me trying to make money now this is also obviously a hedge for the future yeah so here's the thing google trends i don't know if you've noticed i don't know if you guys searched that before you Mm. enter but google trends for fortnite is the lowest it's ever been almost it's uh, it's right there with among us which is a game that you know surged and then disappeared in a month Mm. so it's like and, and me, you, you don't know this about me because, you know, I introduced myself as we have this podcast, but I used to compete in Fortnite um, yep. at, the, at the top. And then I became the, a coach for a year and I was the number one coach in the game for a long time. And then now I'm almost fully out of it. Um, they don't, they haven't changed, you know, Epic Games hasn't changed. And it's like, there never has been support. What's like, what's your plan to make money out of it? Or and how long did it take you to decide? All right, we're gonna go in. So again, we've been looking at it for a couple of years. Right. I think historically we've all always gone for sort of two things in games: legacy and infrastructure, basically. Okay. So we want to have a, a a team or sort of a game that has shown that it's here to stay. So for example, what you see with Counter Strike is you see something like Apex Legend comes out, the Counter Strike player base dips, dips, but the Counter Strike viewer base base stays continually growing. Okay. So we we've, we've attached playing the game from watching the game. Now it's a it's a fundamental sort of entertainment property. I mean, oh. imagine if football, if only people who played football watch football. It oh wouldn't, my God, wouldn't be the business so it is today. Right. You're so right, actually. It, and Counter-Strike, you know, we've seen that. And I think we're, we're starting to see that a little bit with Fortnite. And, and with that, I mean more of a... Even though a 16-year-old has played it for a while and doesn't play it anymore, it still influences the way he talks, the way he dresses, the way he interacts with his yeah. friends. I think that is what we're what we yep. were looking for, I've been and I think we see the that fuck now. Out of my Fortnite Balenciaga hoodie. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that's that's very much what we're looking for because again, as as long as there's context, I can put that into the machinery I already have. You have to remember, we have a a 1,300 square meter uh, flagship store right at the uh, the entrance to Tivoli, the biggest sort of theme park in Denmark. And yeah, I can tell what people who, who walked into that under 16 are interested in. It's not Counter-Strike as much as I would like it to be. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they go see the trophies and they know who we are. But we needed that Fortnite angle to it. So uh, I think okay. if I was starting from scratch, would I start with Fortnite? 
Well, maybe from a marketing perspective, but not from a commercial perspective. But because I have the engine that I already have, I see a lot of potential in it. And then, I mean, I got to be honest as well. I mean, we've been looking at it for a while. Uh, we weren't planning on going into it this fast. But once you get an opportunity like Thomas, who just fits the profile yeah. of everything that we are perfectly, we, we had to jump at it. Is he, de is he from Denmark? Yes. Yeah, so he's from Denmark. He's one of the top players. I mean, dude, they have a chance of winning Grand Royale. We're recording this as Grand Royale is happening. The first game just started. Um, yeah. I, they're a, they're a dude. Queezy's been he's a close friend of mine. They're a great team. They've always had the potential. They're fucking on top right now. Great mm. pickup. Um, but yeah, but I think I, I would actually like to add one thing. I think what's very important for us is he's not famous. The the, the context of him's fame is not the fact that he's either funny or saying crazy things or doing crazy YouTube clips is because he's really fucking good. Yeah. And that is yeah. what we are in Astralis. We that, believe right. in the raw performance. I mean, look at the Counter-Strike team. Our five Danish players who won four majors in a row, they were boring as shit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean they're so, they're they're like, so fuck, Danish. man. Our CEO just called us fucking boring. <laughs> but, I mean, look, that's no, no, what they we know are, that. right? They like, know that. Yeah, they're good at yeah. they're good at what they do. They're not entertainers. They're, they're men. Historically, yeah. Historically, some of the best, some of the best players in the world are usually don't have that much of a personality. You know what I mean? That's just how it goes. They're they're a heat-seeking missile. You know what I mean? Yeah, but we don't yeah. take chances. We play the percentages. We there's a reason yeah. why we win and win and win and win and win. And I think Thomas fits that perf profile perfectly for us. Does that mean that we don't want someone who's flamboying at a later stage or add that to that mix? Of course not. That we would really love that as well. But I think he was just that perfect sort of first box because he fits into everything that we do already, and then we can start building on that. I think that you have a really good handle on the scope of your business within the region that you exist in as far as like, um, you know, you're trying to get into Fortnite to captivate that younger generation that doesn't give a shit about about CSGO. And I think that that's really important for being a more well-rounded business, you know, what I mean, because mm. you're you're capturing that generation and they're going to grow up with you now because you're like the only you're like the biggest team in that area. Like. You know, I had a I had a problem with my uh with my Windows 10 a long time ago. It was it was like two years ago, three years ago, and I called. I ended up having to call like a call center for Microsoft for them to help me, and I haven't done that in forever. So I called. I talked to this guy, and he was he was younger, and I talked to him, and and I was at the time Fortnite was huge. At the time Fortnite was the biggest thing in the world, and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. And you know, you think that because like the bubble in the space of the life you live in, like everyone else is the same. So I was talking to the guy and he was from, dude, he was from some part of Asia probably. And I was like, yeah, you play Fortnite? He's like, no. I'm like, do you play anything? He's like, yeah. Oh my God, I love video games. So I'm like, what do you play? He goes, Dota, Dota 2. I'm like, oh, yeah. really? He goes, dude, everyone I know plays Dota. Nobody plays Fortnite. He's like, only Dota. So it's like also understanding your industry too you know what i mean mm. whatever what, what's popular here might not be popular there that's why csgo thrives where you're at you know what i mean yeah but i think i think in regards to what you said here about the the game and the growth of it i think the other thing that i'm looking at is from a commercial standpoint we've commercialized the potential two to four percent of Fortnite, maybe so even if the percentage just goes i mean the total potential goes down 20 percent. i still have 74 percent, 76 percent to make up so for us there, there's plenty of room to to grow i mean the only thing that i'm not going to do is i'm not going to do what i think a lot of other people did is they went in super early and they overpaid like crazy in salaries you know yeah, that's, that, a, that's that's never going to be we us. have that talk a lot and um I mean, we had a we had a person on here from Enterprise Gaming. He was this. I sent you that when you asked me, like, let me see a preview of your podcast. And he was the CEO of Enterprise. He hopped into Enterprise, gave a contract, and you know, demanded things be done. You know, certain hours streamed, etc. And because of the because of the aura around Fortnite, it being kids, whatever, and people being used to being overpaid and not having to do anything and they still get their money just because, mm. you know, th these these big orgs don't care to hurt their head. They just give them money and tell them, you know, fucking fuck off. He, he ended up not paying a lot of his players because they weren't doing what was contractually obliged of them, right? So, like, you're, mm. you're forced to stream 80 hours under this contract. You're only streaming 20. Why would I pay you? You know what I'm saying? You're not doing your your work. Yeah. Um, a lot of orgs did that, and that's why they lost a lot of money is because they came in and they gave people crazy salaries that didn't make sense. Yeah. They didn't make sense. There's no way you're going to make your money back. You're paying a player 12 grand who's not making con content or placing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't make sense. So but I think just, just to give you sort of a, an angle to that, what, before we signed Thomas, 
we ran him through a series of personality tests, IQ testing, all sorts of different things. No and way. we had two separate physical meetings with our sports director where, where we actually brought his dad as well just to talk about like what is it actually going to mean to play for us what do we expect from you what is how what is the scope of success in this partnership and once we've agreed to all of that and we were happy then we signed the contract yeah Dude, see now that and that's that's a lot more thorough than most other esports i would say m more than all of them it sounds like you signed him to be a professional basketball player like you had a bunch of like i've never heard of anyone doing that ever well, that's because our, our sports director is a guy called Kasper Witt. He's very famous here in the Nordics, but nowhere else because he's a famous handball player. So, you uh -huh. know, Danish people, if, if we're not good at anything, we'll invent a game ourselves and be the best in the world. That is, we'll be very proud of it. Um, but he's like the most intense person in the whole world. Like performance is his life. It means more to him than anything else. And he runs that sort of business. That's also, again, that's why our Counter-Strike team was as good as it was because of the engine that he built around it. I mean, like we have... Um, masseuses, diatrists, doctors, and everything else sort of in around the teams. So yeah, we, we need you to, if, if I, after that meeting, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not bullshitting here, if I didn't think genuinely that we could lift the performance of Thomas, we wouldn't have signed him. Hmm. But and we needed to know that that was the case, because if you were sitting there like this going, <laughs> yeah, I, I wake up at, at five in the afternoon and I play until four every single day and that's never going to change, then, then we would have never signed him. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of players don't realize the the how important health is how important eating right is you know working out how much it helps you well they just, they just still see it as a money grab right get as yeah. much money as you can because of, from this stupid thing and just get out before yeah. it, it's over we need people who look at this as, as like a 10 year because again with, with the other teams we do four year plans typically three to four year plans so your contract for that long just in the next tournament no yeah, this one is multi-year as well okay um it, it, it's it's cool that you're doing this and you don't focus anywhere on like so do you plan so i asked on twitter um you know i said we, we're gonna have you on ask some mm. questions and somebody said like do you plan to make content with him or do you plan to be like all the other orgs that sign somebody and fucking let them be and don't do anything with them you know what's the plan there because you said you're focused strictly on competition are you gonna make content out of your players or is it more so Let's offer him, you know, these things that like you said, health, you have the, you know, the physical uh, therapists or whatever that, that the whole, the whole team around that rather than the content. So we're obviously going to do content, but I think again, the, the, the thing about us is performance come first. So, right. so we have the Nexus, which is a physical facility. Uh -huh. We have creators signed around that Danish content creators. There's a Fortnite people as well. Who's going to do content with him. So you do have that. Training. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but Thomas is, is for me is a performer first and foremost. So for example, if I, I actually had conversations with, do you wanna play Grand Royale from the Nexus? Like we have a big streaming booth with lights and everything and everything is super cool and people could come and see it live. And he was like, I'm not comfortable enough to do that yet. I would like to focus on playing maybe later. I will respect that always. Because again, I signed him to win tournaments. I didn't sign him to say funny things on, on camera. Yeah. There will obviously be content, but it will be Astralis, you know, flavored content. But I think, Obviously, yeah, at some point, we would like to also, because I think, again, F Fortnite for us is, it, it, it goes wider than just Counter-Strike, right? I think I always, when I talk to people, I do like a triangle, where I say the top level of the triangle is what I call the inspirational layer, which is the people, the pro players, the people who you want to be. It's a very small, you know, 0 0.001 percentage of the players. And then under that is the aspirational layer, the people who want to be the pros. And then there's casual gamers underneath. In Counter-Strike, casual gamers is not that big, but there's a lot of aspirational players. Because if you play Counter-Strike, it's such a simple game that if you play it, you want to play on a team. And they and like you to rep it. They like to rep it. Yeah, exactly. It. Whereas I think with, with Fortnite, I think the aspirational layer is still pretty big, but the grassroots layer is, you know, what, 400,000 times larger than it is in Counter-Strike. So we also have to build something that will speak to those people who doesn't necessarily dream of winning a Grand Royale, who just wants to be maybe good at Fortnite or have fun with their friends. So yeah, I think I think at some point we will find the angle on that. But again, we always want to start with the anchor of who we are, and that is performance. So, so you're you have this player, okay? You have Thomas HD. You said you have these Danish content creators as well. How yeah. how um, the way you make your money is through merchandise, etc. Right, or at least a, you know a bit of it is is selling yeah. jerseys. Like you said, you have the thirteen thousand square foot store. Um, how does having this danish content creator sell a thomas hd jersey because they don't know i mean what what makes a player want to go all right let me buy a thomas hd jersey from australis 
Like, why yeah. why would I buy your Danish content creator's jersey if he's not actually plays? Like, I you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not watching a content creator to buy his jersey. You know, maybe I'll buy his merchandise that says something cute or whatever. But I don't want to buy a fucking content creator's jersey. I want to buy a top player's jersey so I can rep Thomas HD on my back and be like, hell yeah. Mm. Like, you know? So how does that yeah. convert? So the, the creators are building a separate way and a separate system. Obviously, we, we don't want to have player play, sort of player jerseys with a name. There's some super hardcore fans might want to have that. Fine. Right. They'll, they'll be able to buy them. They will have more sort of casual merchandise. But what I will use for them for, for example, we have a guy called Tunse, who's a super good Fortnite uh, content creator. I will put him together with Thomas HT, and he will be the entertainer, and he will pull out the personality of Thomas. Because uh -huh. what, I, what I want to offer is, because this is the problem that we have with Counter-Strike as well, right? The only thing that people saw was the same fucking pre-game interview saying, oh, it's going to be a great game, and we're super ready, and we've practiced hard, and blah, blah, blah. And then they play the same map that they always play. They beat them 16-4, and they asked him, was it a good game? Oh, yeah, but the other guys also play great, and everything is good, and we're all happy. And, like, <laughs> it's the same shit always, right? Yeah. Especially when you're Danish, just super sort of straight-lined. Uh -huh. I think we can use the content creators to pull out the personality of Thomas, and then the people who watch the content will go, oh, I actually really like that guy. Yeah. Because yeah. I think yeah. cause what, what the creators can do is they can tell the story about Thomas in a compelling way. And Thomas is uncomparably the best Danish player and one of the best people in the world. So if yeah. you like Fortnite, 100%. you have a reason to watch him. 100% he is. Yeah. yeah. And he's so been on top. will cultivate his fan base. He has the track record. He's been on top for so long. Yeah. And then also notice, if you, if you see his jersey, I mean, there's a lot of sponsor logos on it already. So we also already have existing sponsorships that will just roll into this and help us sort of make this a good good deal for us as well. Did you, uh, is this, this isn't your first, like, business venture, right? Like, Astralis, like, you, did you do anything before this? Because you, you seem like a very rigid businessman, like, as far as, like, you have, you have the roadmap, you know what I mean? Like, everything that you've mentioned is so focused to a, to, like, a, to a point, you know, and I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone that runs an esports team or org sound like you, you know what I mean? Was this your first thing you did, or? I, I actually, the only thing I did before this was other esports teams. So, oh but but I think what I've been what I've been very lucky to have is and I think and I think this is the reason why Astralis has sort of become what it has become is we've been quite good at having a a leadership with different backgrounds. So mm -hmm. usually what you see in esports teams, you'll either see someone like me as the CEO, who is a esport guy who doesn't know anything about the outside world, but is very good at either making content or being creative or doing other things. Or you will see someone who is full on sports or media who doesn't really understand what's going on in here. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you look at us, like our CEO is Anas Hersal. He used to be the CEO of Parken, which is the biggest football club and theme park center in Denmark. My co-founder is a notorious sort of tech entrepreneur here in the Nordics. Uh, we have people from professional sports, from entertainment, from all different walks of life. I think I've just been very, very lucky over the last five years to been able to sort of you know, uh, my, my commercial right hand is, is the former head of commercial for the Danish national team of football. Yes. We're just bringing in people who will bring brain mass to this company, you guys, right? You know, you guys are stacked. You guys have quite the roster of, of professionalism behind the, the, the team. And that brings me to my next question that I was going to ask, which hmm. is, you know, you, 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 you talk about signing Thomas, you talk about how you signed him because he's good, not because he's funny. Are you guys the type of team that if your player were to tweet something off colored, you'd have a conversation with him? You get what I mean? Like, is, is it that type of situation? Like, uh, that, depending that... on the on how off color it is, I mean, we fired people straight up for it. No really? hes hesitancy. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, I we can't it. we I can't handle it. that. Look, I mean, we have we have partners like Bang and Olufsen who does yeah. luxury TVs and sound. I mean, like we have partners like uh, like Microsoft, uh, you know, like Omen, right. like Logitech. Like we can't we can't deal with that. And I think. We have a code of conduct for our players, and if they don't live up to it, they'll get fired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I assumed that, man. That, that honestly it just makes sense by just the way you speak, you know? I assumed that that was the situation. But my impression of Thomas is, is not that I'm going to be expecting any of that. <laughs> nah, we'll he doesn't, he doesn't, we might have a, we might have a podcast crazy. in a month of me hey. after I fire Thomas. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Fortnite kids, Fortnite kids they, they, they range, you know what I mean? I feel like Th Thomas seems like a, like a good kid just based on what I've seen. But Thomas doesn't tweet they, much. They, yeah, they go they go wild sometimes, man. Just some, some shit talk. Shit. Do you do yeah. you scan a player's socials prior? Like, how deep do you go in the tweets and see, like, all right, he's not gonna be a brand risk? We'll we'll do a a, a scope of it and we'll, and we'll take references because I think. Do you hit you the advanced now, search I, and search for all the slurs? No, no, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I actually <laughs> believe I believe more in references to be honest because uh -huh. I think the worst of them you don't see. But but people around them knows about it. Like I like I said, yeah. I've been in esports for almost twenty years now, 
And what? trust me, I know some famous players who have made a lot of money and are still looked upon as saints who are some fucking assholes in real life. Yeah. And say some crazy shit off yeah. camera. So I, I will usually know someone who can tell me is this guy does good that, or is he... So <laughs> does that make somebody a bad person saying things off camera rather than keeping your professional... So Edwin and I are very... Here, here let me give you the backstory, right? Mm. Edwin and I say the crazy shit on camera. Um, mm. <laughs> I mean, the podcast you're on right now is called Brand Risk. Yeah. Right? We're a brand risk. He's, so, like, he's, like, he's like, shit, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so just like in general, we, we kind of believed in like bridging that gap between people actually seeing who people are, you mm. know, and like being able to be comedic in person on our platforms rather than having to laugh, you know, outside of it because yeah. it's not politically correct or whatever. So, so like we, we firmly believe that, all right, if somebody says something off camera, I mean, a lot of the time, it's just people protecting their brand. They don't say it on camera because, you know, they have sponsors or whatever, and they're afraid to mm. lose them. They say things off camera. They crack jokes, whatever. But, like, I mean, what I've noticed, a lot of people that we've had on our podcast will tell us after, we'll be like, we really respect you guys for being you everywhere because we can't do that because we have crazy sponsors, whatever. And a lot of them are depressed yep. because of that reason that, like, all right, like, I'm in entertainment, but my job doesn't allow me to be as entertaining as I want to be because i'm signed yeah. to something you know what i'm saying so like does that necessarily make those saints pieces of shit or are they just protecting their brand and their sponsors you know what i'm saying no no i would i wouldn't i think i think i might have gone a little too far there i, I think that the difference for me is more i have met people who are genuinely bad people. i get what you're saying and, i get what you're and, saying and, and, and they you will can pretend tell. that they're not and they will be sort of yeah, almost yeah yeah oh you don't don't say this but i'm like can you just be, be who you are i get what I think, you're saying i get what you're saying but yeah, i think it, i think most of it to be honest is just bad circumstances most of these people are just an, a product of who they are around and they they might have been been growing up in places or or sort of play with their i mean i'm i'm a gamer myself so i know how it can be if, if you are in an environment where it's okay and then all of a sudden you move into an environment where it's not okay you need to be taught that and we need to sit down uh -huh. with you and say look you can't do these things if you're doing if you tell your friend in private that's fine but you need to understand if that leaks that's going to be a problem yeah and, and, and I think so. I, I think yeah. most of them are genuinely good people, yeah, but there and, are a bunch of people who are and, very. And I think, uh, and I think when you, I think when you met like somebody's a piece of shit, it's not necessarily even the jokes or what they say. It's like they, they put on a facade yeah. of being a better person yeah. than they actually are. You I, know what I mean, I, I, and I get that. I understand that one hundred percent. You can tell someone's a piece of shit off off the bat, and that honestly takes me back to the point you said you got lucky. You know, like five years ago, that for the past five years you've had a lot of great people next to you. Uh, you know, I, I I'm not a fan of the term lucky because I think people invest in people and it's pretty clear like why somebody would invest in you you know what i'm saying like these opportunities come i have a rule and it's just don't be a piece of shit and then like you know things <laughs> th yeah. things happen to you that are good so um okay so you're invested in csgo now you're invested in a fortnite who's your next player what's the next step you can't tell us the I player but like do you plan on bringing on more players or are you starting off with just thomas seeing how that I think we're, we're going to start off with just Thomas. And then I think obviously what we were waiting a little bit for it was Epic's announcement around next year as well. Like what is the constellation that we're looking at? You have to remember like we are coming from a world like we're coming from League of Legends, five on five, Counter-Strike, five on five, uh, Rainbow Six, five on five. So we're used to sort of getting very meticulous working stuff like communication, problem solving, uh, cultural psychology among uh -huh. a team, all these different things. That's what we're really, really good at. So we're super excited. Like just the fact when I remember like when Thomas told our sports director that you play trios, but you don't play with teammates. And he was like, what? Like, it doesn't make yeah, any sense to him. He's yeah. like, pick up basketball, right? And you, oh, you, you look good. I'll play with you. So I think we're really, I, now I thought it was duos, which I think is going to be an interesting constellation for us. I think what we'll probably try to do is find someone who is the best possible teammate for Thomas and then try to sort of see if we can actually work. get to work with these it things. It doesn't work. Yeah, hey, we'll see. You can't, you hey, can't, hey, you hey, can't hey. force, you can't force two people to play together. We saw it. I want you to look at this up. Look up the TNA huh. guys. Okay, they they won FNCS on in Australia twice. Hmm. They came to North America. Team flew them out. They weren't forced to play together, but they did play together because I mean they had won twice on Australia. They shit the bed. They shit the bed again, and then they split. And the first time they split, one of them won FNCS on North America. Mm. So it's like, you can't, 
you can't force people in Fortnite to stay together. It's just the age is too young. It's not a league. I'm warning you from now because yeah. you might go invest in a teammate and then they're going to feel the pressure of having to play together because you sign him so that both teammates would be Astralis players and it's going to fuck you. We'll see, because I think that this is the fun part, right? Like, yeah, concept, yeah, we did it's five a game. different things where people told me you can't do it, it's impossible, and then we did it, and then it worked. Think, so we'll, we'll see. I think that if anyone can do it, it's, 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 it sounds like it's you guys. You know what I mean? Uh, and honestly, honestly, I would say that I think that it's not as hard as Air is making it s sound to be, because you guys manage teams with five people. That's a lot of dynamics in on one team. So managing two people shouldn't be that much different. But I will say, if this is your first battle royale. Uh, centric esports you're getting into there's a lot more variables than just communication there's a lot of things that just happen and and there's no way to you know counteract that if that makes but sense look, you know that, I, mean? I think that that comes back to the whole system that we build around personality testing etc yeah. right like we, yeah, we will true. test what your level of conflict is and i think so for example one of the parameters is you're either red ah, or you're okay. blue right so the red person really cares about winning above everything else and the blue person cares about the environment and how you speak to each other above everything else. So if you put yeah. one, two of those together, they will spend 90% of their time arguing about whether what is, what is the focus point, how are we speaking to each other. Like I've tested a player once who was 1% away from being maximum of what the test could do in, on red. He's batshit crazy. Like he, yeah. will, he will kick the other player just to win. Like He doesn't care about anything else. So what you have to do is you have to find someone who actually fits Thomas. Uh, I get what you're saying. But we'll see. I mean, yeah, I, it might blow and up, these are but things, we're definitely going to no, give no, it a right. try. Uh, I'm dude, giving see, you my dude. perspective, and you have a way different one. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, dude, I think that I think that the reason that you guys could actually make that work is because you guys have the infrastructure around the selection process that, like, you're right, it is like pickup basketball where these kids just like, they're like, okay, well, I heard you're pretty good. I don't know you. I've never really talked to you or whatever, but the people that watch me say that you're good or people that I know say that you're good, so let's try it out. So if that's not the approach that you take when selecting a teammate, you, you might actually find more success, which is just fucking, it, make, it makes sense, you know what I mean? Like, these kids that just pick up a random person you're actually going through psychological testing to make sure they're a match i think you'll be fine you know what i mean let me uh let me give you another example because okay there's a team you ever heard of scented yeah i think so face scented he was basically like what astralis was before 2017 before you won your first major 2017 right you guys would always get to semifinal. You get second place or third, and you can never win. He got second place four FNCSs in a row. Four FNCSs in a row. He was a few points off winning. Okay. He played with his teammate for two and a half years. I mean, they finally split up. They were just like, all right, fuck it. Like, we're, we keep getting second. Like, something's got to. And that's like the best. That is the most consistent. The team that has ever happened in Fortnite, and he left his day one duo mm. about like four or five months ago, just because they're like, all right, you know, there's something's got to switch. I mean, granted, two years is a long time to stay with someone, so it makes sense. You know, you can find these people as well. You can use that as a case study to find these people that are compatible with someone. Um, but yeah, I, that that infrastructure that you have, I'm sure it could it could play off well. It's just, I think, just remember that you're dealing with younger kids. That's oh the yeah, and thing. I think the other thing is it, with duos, it's harder, right? Because you can't. If at least it was three, you could build a core of two. Yep. And then, then you could sort of figure out what is the third one. I think two is going to be, it, it's going to be challenging, but I think it's also going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I yeah, know Casper's be... super excited to get into that. Well, you haven't even watched the Fortnite tournament. You know, I'm on your Twitter feed, and your your last tweet is: "Is the official stream the best place to watch Grands? This is your first time watching a game that you just I'm invested not... into a player." I'll I'll watch it afterwards. What I'm from what I'm hearing, there's there's quite a lot of time to watch. It's like what do they play two point two yeah. times five hours, right? Yeah, there's a lot of time yeah. to watch. They, yeah, they and then in like classical blast fashion, they have doubled the points on the second day to make sure that yeah. everybody can still win. So so <laughs> now that now that we've gone That's over a good old trick, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> now that we've gone over the, you know, the reason you got in, what your plans are, etc. You have a media company called Blast. Which can you say what is happening? So what, I don't own it anymore, but I did found it. Okay. So so I was sort of I've actually been sort of on a full journey. So I'll try to I'll do this fast. Yeah, do it so fast. So I founded Astralis, and then the venture fund who invested in me, the partner there, left there to build Astralis better because we were doing good, but it wasn't great. Uh huh. So we did a company called Refresh Entertainment that then owned Astralis. 
And then we also did multiple other teams, but among that we also did Blast. It was called Blast Pro Series back then, which was because the, we didn't. There was any good tournaments. We needed a tournament to play that was actually like really big here in the Nordics. So we did that, um, and it worked really well until the point where we were starting getting too many questions about owning the tournament and owning the team that won the tournament. That wasn't. Uh, <laughs> And then the summer of, of 2019, we decided, or we actually were allowed by the board, me and Nikolai, my co-founder, to buy out the team section. And then the teams was Astralis. In Counter-Strike, it was Origin in League of Legends, and it was Future FC, the FIFA team. And then we took that, and we actually sort of made it all the way back to just being named Astralis, all of it. So, so basically, I went from Astralis to a lot of other points, and then back to just Astralis. So, so, so and you had, you had that media company that runs tournaments? They, yes. they run tournaments, they produce them, everything. Um, do you still work with them at all? Or no, not with them? Oh, any yeah, league? so they have a, a franchise league in Counter-Strike, so we're still sort of well in contact. But also, look, a lot of the people, Denmark is not that big. <laughs> Let's be hey, honest. Did you, did, you, did you have to get rid of your ownership because it was a, a direct conflict of interest, just like yes. blatantly? Is that the only Yeah, reason? yeah, but look, the, the, the problem was that... The problem was that... Uh, we actually, it was never going to be an advantage for Astralis that we owned that and Blast. It was always going to be a disadvantage. Because if there yeah. was ever a decision that was remotely close, we had to go the other way just to prove yeah. that we wouldn't pick Astralis, right? Yeah. So it was yeah. actually a bad thing. And, and then the other thing was also, That's Astralis crazy. was my heart, right? I, I sat at my home on my kitchen counter and I drew a star and painted it red and found the name. It's an old Finnish Counter-Strike team actually from like the early 2000s that I was a big fan of when I was 13. So I did Astralis. That was my passion project, where uh, Blast was more of a decision that the company made to build. Yeah. So gotcha. I, I, I kind of felt like I need to go one or the other direction, and I would mm -hmm. rather go with what is my heart rather than what is the business decision. And I could, I mean, I mean I'm super happy for Blast. For sure. I mean, I, I just, I, 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 I was a part of creating the blueprint for something I would never would imagine it would have become what it is today. And the people that they have there are, are really, really good. But I think you're going to see that in Fortnite as well. I mean, they do, hands down, the best production in Counter-Strike, uncomparably. And they are moving into Fortnite. Yes, so they're contracted by Epic. They did one of the, they did the All-Star thing as well. And now okay. they're doing this Grand Royale. Sick, the production. sick. That's now, cool, dude. That's sick. One more, one more question um, before we wrap it off. I know you got to go watch Grands. And, you know, we've gone through most of... The, the the Fortnite side of things. Do you plan on expanding to other regions or are you planning to just stay in the Danish niche and, and you know, Denmark being... We, right. we absolutely have to get, get out to other regions. I think the the reason why we like Thomas so much and wanted to do this is I, I'd never made a decision that I wanted the first guy to be Danish. The fact that a player this good who was Danish became available was just lucky, to be honest. It will give us a chance to be really close to him and learn a lot more about this. Uh, is his duo partner next year going to be Danish? Maybe we'll have to figure that out with him as well. But I definitely want to go. I mean, I would really like a U.S. player as well. But I think the really cool thing about Fortnite is as a platform, it is not that regionalized. I mean, if yeah. you look at Counter-Strike team, they're typically same country because it's easier for communication. And it's very hard to make an American fan care about five Danish players as soon as sort of they're not... I mean, as soon as they're playing, they're speaking Danish to each other, which sort of limits right. the, your ability to understand them and, and be a part of it. So I would very much like to go to other countries. And I think, you know, who knows? We might have two or three duos next year. And, and Thomas is just one, on one of them. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I believe a lot in the potential of Fortnite. And I think I think Epic is, is hopefully get it, moving in the right direction. I think we'll they see. are. There's, there's mixed messages around the latest <laughs> sort of yeah. announcements. But I think they get it. And I think, they, I think once they find the right way to sort of align the incentives of the, t of the organizations, once they get better and better organizations in, not being afraid of us fucking over the players, to be honest, and and sort of the tournament structure, I think they're gonna find a, a good way to do it. I think you give them three to four years, and then Epic will be. I know it's a long time, but like mm. Epic will have some sort of competitive standard. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, I think they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to move that way, or else it's they're they're just gonna get fucking bulldozed by new games that actually put that effort into the competitiveness. I actually do have one one last question though. You know, you're talking about how Blast was. Uh, was uh putting together the the events for epic like they got contracted by epic did that at all affect your want to get into the into the scene like did you guys get contracted before before you picked up a player does that make sense uh, so again blast is not a part of our company anymore um I, I think it's a good sign, to be honest because I think I think th this one of the things that was really looking to epic for was 
this is going to sound so childish, but do they understand what they don't understand? Like, do they know? Because some of these guys, right. you know, whether it's Riot or Blizzard or Epic, because of the humongous success that they have had with their game, sometimes they can be quite arrogant. Uh -huh. And they yeah. can be quite, yeah, yeah, we know what we're doing. Do you mind shutting the fuck up? Like, we're good at this. Yeah. We, we created the best game ever. Like, what are you thinking? And I think them contracting Blast for this shows that they know what they're good yeah. at and what they're not good at. So for me, it's a, it's a very that's positive a sign, to be honest. That's a good point. Yeah. That's, a, that, that, that's a great point. Um, Listen, guys, if you have anything else to say, Feel free to say it. Otherwise, we'll we'll wrap it up here. I know we have Grand Rialto. I'm, uh, I'm just really, really hoping that Thomas uh, takes the crown in, in his first sort of tournament as a strat. That would be really cool. But again, I understand that it's a little bit of a crazy system. I have to get used to it. It's not easy to follow. Listen, but, man. Uh, listen, man. I uh, I'm a big fan of Queezy. Queezy's the homie. I always, whenever there's a tournament that he makes into the grands, I'm mm -hmm. always Queezy's gonna win. So I'm on you right there, man. I'm I'm with you. Sounds Queezy good. and Tom is taking the first place tomorrow. <laughs> um, guys, listen. If you made it to the end of the podcast, make sure to follow Jakob on his socials. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, he's trying to learn Fortnite, so go respond and help him on under his tweets on you know who he can watch for watch parties or or whatever it is on how the competitive Fortnite formats work. Uh, thank yeah. you guys for making it to the end. We're on Spotify, Apple, and YouTube on all platforms. Uh, We'll see you guys later. Peace.